<laughs> it's after April Fool's, but the foolishness never ends when we look at government-run, taxpayer-funded schools. Case in point, Hampton, Georgia, where a seventh grade social studies middle school teacher was caught and admitted to assigning students the exercise of writing letters to Washington, D.C., promoting further restrictions on the right to keep and bear arms. Seriously. Indeed, evidently this seventh grade teacher named Corey Sanders forgets what it's like to be a student trapped in the 12-year prison of public schooling. Evidently, he forgets that sometimes students don't like being propagandized or being compelled to say things with which they might not agree. Assigning students to write letters to Congress advocating for stricter gun laws, according to a Blue Lives Matter report. Yeah, the assignment saying, quote, you are trying to persuade lawmakers to have stricter gun laws to help prevent another school shooting from taking place. And it turns out, indeed, one of these students went to his father. His father complained and brought it to the attention of the public. Uh, my biggest concern was what was the intent of the assignment. Um, you know, I found out that it didn't have anything to do with um, what they were supposed to be learning uh, in, that so in that social studies class. Yes, Teacher Sanders was caught trying to get kids writing letters to Washington, D.C. to actually work against their own right to keep and bear arms when they get out of school. Beautiful stuff. And this isn't even an American history class. This is a class that is supposed to be teaching kids about African, Asian, and Middle Eastern history. Now, one wonders whether Mr. Sanders bothered to tell the students about the genocides that have occurred in places like Sudan, China, and Cambodia after gun confiscation. Hmm, methinks probably not. And one wonders whether Mr. Sanders bothered to tell students about Thomas Jefferson's Virginia statutes which state that it is the height of evil and sin to compel a man to pay for ideas with which he disagrees. I, I just didn't think that it was appropriate for the teacher to be um, forcing that kind of opinion on the children and, and using them to try to persuade lawmakers to, to enact stricter gun laws. Now, the school district did respond to our request for a statement. They said, quote, the lesson topic was not a part of an approved curriculum. We would never approve of a politically biased assignment or directive given by a teacher. Ah, but this is a larger lesson that all of us can learn about government run schooling, because it doesn't matter whether it's just this instance. We can learn a bigger lesson about this. It's about compelling people to pay for government schooling, something which did not happen in early America and actually saw great literacy, despite the fact that there was no compulsion to pay for ideas in schools with which people did not agree. Why? Because there was virtually no government schooling until the mid-1800s in the United States. And people did very well. Literacy was very high and kids didn't have to go back to their parents to say, hey dad, guess what you're paying for? Propaganda to destroy your own rights. If he was given the opportunity to write from another perspective, um, then that would have been okay. Um, I just didn't feel it was appropriate just to have the one stance. Just a little something to keep in mind after April Fool's Day. For MRC-TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.